Great. Uh, well, first of all, welcome and, and congratulations on all this excitement. And, I, and you know, what's it like for you? You know, you, you got you got to go to space, and then you get to you know have this big Hollywood premiere. How cool is that? <laughs> Seeing the movie is pretty cool, especially because it has been a little while since we landed, and so it brings it all back to you. The experience of of having been in space and and seeing all the different activities that we did and how much fun it was. So, you know, the movie was a really great way to relive that. What was it like for you when you first saw the film? You know, you're, you're, you know did you feel like you were back up there? Absolutely. I was actually speechless when the, when the film first ended, but that didn't last very long. I quickly started, you know, talking about every aspect of it, and I asked James right away, can you please rewind it so I can see it again? Um, there's so much to think about, not just the part of the movie that is our crew doing the things that we did, which is, which is really fun to see, but also all the other aspects of it, you know, the story of the telescope, which is a remarkable story. Um, I particularly loved, though, the, the sequences where we got to fly through the Orion Nebula and then see the cosmic web of the universe. Those are just incredible, I mean, really breathtaking, and I can't wait for people to see those because I don't think anyone's ever thought of that before. Um, and ever thought about how that would look to get up close to some of those those features in in the night sky? So it's it's a pretty amazing thing to to experience that fly through. In that yeah, way. especially all of us who will never be able to get exactly. out there. Exactly, we'll know? never go there. And yeah. so to to experience it um, with this with this movie is pretty amazing. Very very cool. For you, um, your training. You know, when you prepare to go up in space, I mean, you're you're dealing with a whole issue you know, as it is, you know, that's pretty frightening to go up there and do what you have to do. But now they've added this film to your plate, you know. What kind of pressure was it for you, Megan, like, you know, to, to know that you had to do it your job, but yet you also had to deliver this for Tony? Well, the, the, I think the main pressure was on our pilot, Greg Johnson, Ray J. He was really the director, the in-flight director, if you will, for the movie. And um, the way that I could help him was to tell him when a sequence was coming up that I knew he was interested in. He would come up and say, OK, are you, are you at this stage yet, say, where the wide field camera is going in or coming out? And I could give him an update on where I thought we were, when I thought I'd be moving the arm. And so because we had been able to train that on Earth at the Neutral Buoyancy Lab, um, we knew what to expect and what he was interested in, and, and I could kind of help him in that way. But he really had the, uh, you know, he had to hit the start button and the stop button, so that pressure was all on him. Yeah. Now, props to you. I mean, you are manipulating the arm from inside the cabin, and then you have, you basically, you know, get it, guiding the guys out there in spacewalk. Whoa. Like, I mean, there's sometimes when it was eight hours you had to do that for straight? They were long EVAs, some of them, and um, we, again, had practiced every minute of these things uh, on on. Earth and the neutral buoyancy lab and so I had had hundreds of hours really practicing with them they're underwater and I'm sitting up in a control room where I have you know a mock-up of, of what the shuttle arm controls look like and a lot of video screens and so we can practice over and over again I'm really I really am moving them around the mock-up of the telescope they really are doing the work that they're gonna do and we're talking back and forth just the way we're gonna do it in space and so when we really did it it felt very natural it felt very comfortable I didn't have any hesitation hesitation like oh this is the real thing because I'd seen it so many times before. So the training is really fabulous and, and all of our instructors that train us at the Johnson Space Center are really amazing and do a great job at it. They, they really know what they're doing. Yeah, and then, you know, you train and you train and you prepare, but you can't prepare for when, once you're up there when things go wrong. And as we saw in the film, you know, there were a few issues and, you know, how do you guys wrap your mind around it? Like, you have to be so patient and calm, I can't <laughs> even imagine. We actually do, I mean, you think you can't anticipate everything that could go wrong, but we try really hard to do that. Uh, again, going back to our instructors and the people that plan the spacewalks, um, Tomas and Christy, who you see a little bit in the movies, they spend hours and hours trying to think of all of the different things that can go wrong and working with the engineers at Goddard to try to come up with the solution. Now, maybe it's not exactly those things that go wrong when we're in space, but they've already sort of figured out that problem-solving technique and how they're going to work together to come up with an answer. Mm -hmm. And so when things do go not quite according to plan, they already have that sequence in place to, to start talking to all the right people and to start getting together with the hardware that we have on the ground and figuring out a solution. So again, they really they really know what they're doing. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, not a lot of women get to go up to space. I mean, how phenomenal for you. Like when you got that call to, you know, invite you to NASA on the train. I mean, what was it like? What were your parents feeling? Oh, it's it is it's a it's an incredible day. You know, we everybody's sort of waiting by the phone when you know that the phone calls are coming out because everyone that's interviewed, you sort of keep in touch via email and people start to say, "Oh, I got my phone call. I'm in or I'm out." And uh, so you're sort of waiting for that phone call to come in. And, and when I got the call, I had sort of prepared by placing a list by my phone in my office that had all the names of the people that were on the selection committee, because it's going to be one of those people that calls you. Right. And, the, and the fellow you know, introduced himself and said, I'm just calling to see if you'd like to come and work for us at, at NASA. And I just started laughing. 
And um, I said, I'm sorry, can you say your name again, please? You know, I'm trying to figure out, is this a, a real phone call or is this a, is my friend playing a trick on me? And he said, I promise, you know, this is for real. We really want you to come and do this. And so it's a pretty, uh, you feel very giddy, like it's like it's not really happening, but um, but it is. And so here yeah. we are. And getting, uh, you know, bonding with the guys, you know, you're being brought, brought into the boys club <laughs> yep, here, Megan. Yeah, well, I think, you know, unfortunately in the sciences and engineering, you oftentimes are one of the only women doing the kinds of jobs that we do in order to get to NASA and, and become an astronaut. And so you do get used to that um, and really this group of guys is it's a great group of guys it really is like um, you know being on a camping trip with your six older brothers it's a lot of fun um, we really were like one big family and we spent a lot of time with each other's spouses and, and families and stuff through the through the years training together so uh, you get very comfortable you don't have a lot of um, sort of personal space or privacy in space but you try to respect that as much as possible and every once in a while they would banish me to the flight deck and say okay we're all gonna change clothes downstairs <laughs> you go upstairs kind of a thing so so we try to do the best we could with that sort of thing yeah Right um, now, you're you're married, and your husband is also an astronaut, that's right. correct? Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's that's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's great because you know he flew in space first, actually, and so he could give me some sort of tips on what that was like and, and things to think about. You know, we train so many different aspects of the mission technically, but not so much you know how to live in space. And so it was fun to share notes uh, on that with him before I got to go. Wow. I don't even know how you guys get through, you know, when you have to go up or he has to go up. Like, I it's, can't imagine yeah. what it's like. It's definitely a different experience watching someone launch as opposed to doing it yourself. When it's yourself and you're in the vehicle, you're very focused on your task, you have a job to do, and so you're, you do it. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of excitement and everything. And then when you're watching someone else do it and you don't have any control or any role to play other than as a spectator, it's definitely a different set of emotions as you're watching, you know, someone you love blast off the earth. It's yeah. so, it's pretty intense. It's pretty intense just watching it too, as it a, as you know, somebody who's not even related. When you guys all stepped out onto the tarmac there, and you know, just before you're about to go on, I always find that just so emotional. It is. It's you walk out, and there's this whole team of people at the Kennedy Space Center that are part of the space program and have supported the shuttle program for so many years, and they immediately start roaring and cheering, and it's this wave that just washes over you, and it's very exciting, and you sort of take that excitement with you and, and take it all the way out to the launch pad, but as you get closer and closer, there's fewer and fewer people sort of lining the streets, and you realize that, okay, we're, we're sort of the last ones out here, um, so that's a pretty neat feeling as well. Yeah, one thing I noticed in the film, and I know this is just so minute, but it just caught my eye, is in the, when you're in the shuttle, you had a necklace on, and it's floating. And I thought, you're allowed to wear jewelry up there? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually this same necklace that I wear kind of every day of my life. And so you are allowed to bring the things that you would wear sort of normally in your day to day um, life. You don't wear it when you're in your launch and entry suit because, of course, you don't want to damage the seals that, that would protect you in case of a depressurization. And so, you know, you sort of keep that personal jewelry with your personal clothing and gear, and then you can put it on sort of once you're up there. So, um, so that's what we do. And it's nice to have, you know, your wedding ring. I have my grandmother's wedding ring, that kind of thing, some sort of personal mementos. Great. Well, if this space thing doesn't work out, you're going to be uh, turning to Hollywood now? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do a great job. The movie is phenomenal, and it's just an honor and a pleasure to talk to you and meet you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's a real honor That's to great. be part of it. Thank Thanks. you so much. Great talking.